talking gun stocks, we're talking, I'm talking wood. I work with wood, obviously. There's basically two categories. We have laminates nowadays and a solid piece of wood. The laminates are great. They're more impervious to moisture. They're stronger, denser, uh, like I say less likely to warp. But some people prefer, and myself among them, a straight piece of wood through and through. The disadvantage being is they claim that, of course, that uh, they are more likely to warp, and that's possibly true. But in my lifetime, and all the guns I've had, I have never had one warp enough to throw the siding off. Not to say that doesn't happen, but and if it does, it's usually easily correctable by just a little judicious sanding in the barrel channel, and it's corrected for another 20 years. From an aesthetic point of view, and from a traditional point of view, there's no substitute for just black American walnut. Of all the, just so apart of, apart from the laminates, we're using talking just solid woods. Probably eighty percent of all gun stocks are done with a black American walnut, American black walnut, and or its rich cousin, the European or sometimes called English or French walnut or Yugoslavian walnut. Uh, we're all basically the same species of tree, but in those countries they only harvest those that were raised in a higher, drier climate, where it grows slower and more dense and oftentimes much more uh, beautifully figured wood as well. They are a joy to work with. They're the best carving wood in the world. They hold checkery and are carving real well. They're, they're tough, they'll stand up to it. Um, now, amongst the black walnut, you can buy a dozen stocks from the same company, and you might have one or two that are a bugger to work with. Some are just priceless gems and anything in between. It's still an individual thing. Each one is an individual piece of wood. It was a life form at one point, after all. And uh, the other, uh, one of the other alternatives to walnut is maple is sometimes still used. Uh, works very good, it carves well. It's the only disadvantage, if you would call it that, is that it's a very light colored wood. It does have some beautiful uh, fiddleback or tiger stripe, they call it, figurine on it, or bird's eye maple there is too but it'll, on there it becomes out quite blonde. And it's a little heavier than wallet. So for a rifle stock, that is sometimes a consideration. The other one that many gun companies started using probably around the 60s as a cheaper substitute for walnut is birch or beech wood. And the birch and beech wood is uh, Again, a very plain, almost white wood in its natural state. Now, all these other stocks you see back against the wall are walnut. There is no stain in them. That's the natural color of the wood, just with oil applied. When I was finished with this birch or beech wood, and I can't quite identify between the two of them, they look very similar. They're actually a good stock. They're, they're good wood. They're usually carved well, again, depending on the individual piece. But once you're done with it, it is as white as a two by four. So this is stained. It's red mahogany stain that I put over the whole thing once I was done to give it some color at least. And uh, you can see the grain, is, it's all right. It's nothing, there's nothing fancy, too fancy in it. So birch does require staining if you, you want a darker color. Right. As, as it is, it's, it's as white as a, as a two by four you buy from the lumber yard and they it's kind of almost white wood. But like I say, it's not a bad stock to, to work with for the carving checkering purposes and for function wise it has the right weight and strength to make a good stock. Is that a more inexpensive uh, type of wood that people Definitely. use? It's more inexpensive and that's why the gun manufacturers use it. They usually only put it on their less expensive models to keep the cost down so they can offer it at a lesser price than their premium grades. How is it to work with Again, it varies with each individual piece, but uh, generally pretty good. I've had a few that you'll find soft spots in them, whereas you're checking, it tends to get fuzzy on you. It's just very soft wood. But I have encountered that in walnut too on a rare occasion. It's more common with a birch or beech because it isn't quite as dense or hard of wood. So from a checkering and carving point of view, walnut is easier to work with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, like I say, it is really the premier wood stock. It happens to be the right weight, density, strength for. A, it was like it was designed for gun stocks. And when you get to the European or select grade of American stocks that happen to be raised a little slower and 
growing in a drier climate, the wood is perfect for a gunsaki. Or for carving or any real detail work on it. It'll withstand very intricate tiny carvings and it'll be that little tiny carving won't break off from handling so easily. It's very tough and very nice color to configure. So could you discuss the different grades of wood stocks that you can buy? I notice a lot of times they have triple A, quadruple A, different grades. That's uh, what's going on there. Well, when you do the different grades, you're really just paying for the figure in the wood. And it's an interesting point because uh, you can go up to some pretty high priced stocks for the real premium grades. And they're gorgeous. I mean, like they have marbling in them. Um, you'll see a little bit of that. It's just barely showing in some of these. Because these are just the simple plain grades. And they vary quite a bit between pieces. And they do. Pieces. They vary quite a lot. So each one's unique, so that's almost something if you're shopping for you would want to take a look at in person. When you're shopping for a gun style, there's a couple things. Structurally, you want to look for one important consideration that most people don't even think of is the direction of the grain of wood. Now, I have to ask you before we get too far. This is this black is, American walnut. This is a black American walnut, just like these from the same batch. This is just unoiled. This is raw wood. And you don't need to add stain to this because this walnut just uh, once you get it polished up the oil it, we get this oil and the oil okay and finished into it yeah okay continue sir but like say the the grain of the wood the which way the uh, you can see the grain here uh when you're selecting a stock you want to watch for if you can find a stock where the grain actually follows the pistol grip curve if it kind of tends to go straight across you'll find at some point that there's the grain runs like this, it's inherently a weak stock. You can have a, ever fall with it or something, you could snap it right in half, right through the pistol grip. But if, as long as there's at least somewhat of a curve so that even a few of those little grains actually continue beyond this critical point, it, it's quite strong. Okay, so look for uh, structural integrity with the grain following the contours on the but weaker bear areas. In mind that a tree does not grow in the shape of a gun stock. So it's, <laughs> it's a some, challenge. You're not going to really find it, but you can find one where the grain, it, with the way it was cut out of the, the stock was carved out of the blank, was allowing for a little bit of this downward slope in the grain. Okay. If you got that, you're good. As far as the fancy figured stocks and the really expensive ones, if you're going to check and carve, it's a little bit of gilding the lily. If it's really a gorgeous piece of wood you spend a fortune on, as, as far as aesthetics, it doesn't need any embellishment. The wood itself can be so beautiful. And also, conversely, if you've got a really beautiful piece of wood, you do not want to obliterate the grain with carving and checkering and, and cover up all that gorgeous marbling or fiddleback, whatever you have in there. So, if you're going to carve a checker gun, especially checking, which is also, as I say, functional, a, a plain stock is great. Or if you want the best of both worlds, you want to look for one that has beautiful marbling or fine figure in the wood in the butt stock, which is going to be left smooth or in the space between the two checkered panels. If you find one that has lovely figure in here and the butt stock, they've got the best of both worlds. But it's not important to have it where you're going to checker and carve anyway. So if you find something that has just beautiful wood right in here, some really beautiful figuring, and you're going to checker it, like uh, maybe you're spending a lot of money for something you're going to obliterate or cover up a bit. So something to think of. Now again, when you when you the gun is checkered, like this one shows it up better because it's a, a heavier showing grain. The grain still does show right through the checkering. If it's done, the checkering is done right. If it's very uniformly cut. It doesn't really hide the grain. It just gives it a sheen over the, the grain of the wood. But it still shows right through. And uh, what's the word for that, where you have a lot of contrast and beauty in the grain? A uh, figure in the wood. Figure, okay. Figure, yeah. So and when you're simple. paying more money for a wood stock, usually for the fancy ones, you're paying, you're paying for the for figure. figure. Now, what part of the tree would uh, encourage a better figure? Is there a difference? Um, the, the bulk of the tree. There is a, you'll sometimes encounter sapwood in a stock. 
And uh, some people are a little alarmed by it because you'll have a gun stock and all of a sudden you'll have a band, just an abrupt end, nice dark walnut, and then very light strip of wood all of a sudden going off. And this is because that was closer to the bark where the sap runs up the tree and it's called sap wood for that reason. There's nothing wrong with it. It is just as strong as the rest of the tree. It'll cut and handle nice, but you're going to have this blonde strip. I've had a few of those and uh, asked the uh, customer what he wants to do with it. And in a couple of cases, I stained it to match the rest of the dark. And some people thought, hey, it's part of the tree. Leave it blonde. It's an interesting conversation piece. You know, that's a piece of sapwood running through mm. there. It's not good or bad. So keep an eye out for the sapwood if running you know, through you know, if you don't like be it. Be aware of it, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, when you're ordering a new gun stock, let's say I wanted to get a nice, uh, fancy piece of wood, um, what's uh, what would you recommend for the uh, best value? Uh, you have to look at it really, because what's a fancy piece of wood to one is plain to another. To me, these are all beautiful. I love them. These are a lower grade. I mean, the basic grade. Uh, so in the right hands, done up correctly, you can. Uh, now, how much was uh, how much would one of these be just in the raw form, like you're holding here? Because this, uh, once you're done with it, it's going to turn out like this. I, I forget that something like sixty or eighty dollars a piece, probably for these. Well, that's not bad at all. And then and you just work it right, and it turns out shape beautiful. Where it's ninety-five percent inleted for you. Okay. And the the finish is about eighty ninety percent done. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some roughness on the surface here yet. Some of it just feels fuzzy rough. So you're and not just going to slap oil ridges. on here, right? Right. It needs to be finished, finished. So like I say, you want to stick uh, with something like this, you need to finish up the finish. Okay. Well, let's move on to some finishing then. All right.